So one confusion I want to clear up right away is the difference between the World Wide Web and the Internet. It's easy to get confused between the two because most of our experience with the Internet is the World Wide Web. Most of what we do online, or a large amount of what we do online, is either in the web browser today or directly involves accessing uh, World Wide Web content. But there's a big difference between the World Wide Web and the Internet. And in fact, the World Wide Web really consists of a subset of the Internet. Remember, we define the Internet as a physical network, a set of protocols that are used by computers that operate on that network, and by the content that people put on the network and exchange over that physical network using those protocols. And one way to convince you that the internet is not the same as the World Wide Web is to contrast the World Wide Web with another very popular application that runs on top of the internet that you're probably familiar with. Uh, it's something called email. You may have heard of it. It seems to be going out of fashion a little bit. But let's talk about the ways in which the World Wide Web differs from email. So as far as the physical network is concerned, both the World Wide Web and email use the same physical internet. There's really no difference there at all. But once we talk about the other factors, there are differences. So one difference is in the protocols that are used. I'm not going to talk about these in detail, but Documents on the World Wide Web are accessed using a protocol called HTTP or HTTPS. You've probably seen this in the web addresses that you enter into uh, your web browser. In contrast, email actually has its own set of protocols, and you may or may not be familiar with some of these. You may have heard of the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP. If you've configured a Mail client, you may have had to deal with POP or IMAP. These are protocols for accessing email from a server so that you can read it um, in an application. There's other email exchange protocols as well. Um, so that's one difference is in, at the protocol level. So the web and email use a different set of protocols. Another interesting difference is the names that are used by these, uh, by these services. So you're probably familiar with this format of a URL. Um, this is something that you may have entered in a web browser, you've seen it in your web browser, and this is something that was introduced as part of the World Wide Web by Tim Berners-Lee to refer to web documents. So this is a URL, or uh, now referred to as a Uniform Resource Identifier, or URI. In contrast, email defines its own set of names, and these are pretty iconic as well. This is my email address, challen at buffalo.edu. You can see that there are some similarities here. In particular, in both cases, there's a host name that's part of the name. Um, but the rest of it is quite different. This part, uh, the username at, really has no relationship to this. And email doesn't have the rest of the URL that identifies the web document that I'm actually trying to access. OK, so now let's look at the next uh, big difference, which is in content. And to do that, I'm just going to quickly show you what an email and a web document look like, what the actual contents of those documents look like, not what you see. Uh, when you access them, but what the actual content of the document is. So here's an example of an email. This is the actual contents of an email message that Greg received. If we scroll down, we'll see that uh, you can see the uh, stuff that might be more familiar to you, like it has a subject and a sender, um, and then there's actually some content down here that is the, in the actual message. In contrast, here's the content of a web document. This is a page from Wikipedia. I'm not going to show you all of it because there's quite a bit here. But you can see that the structure of this document is quite different. This is what's called HTML. It's the markup language that's used on the internet uh, to create web documents that are then rendered in your web browser. So the web browser receives this document using the HTTP protocol and renders it so that it looks like this. This is pretty magical, right? Um, in contrast, this is the, the actual contents of the message that would be exchanged by the SMT protocol um, when it's moving mail from one machine to another. And there's a lot of information in here that's pretty useful uh, to include as part of that process. But here's what you see. In this case, we're using a email reader that's actually part of a website. But you might see this as part of a standalone email reader like uh, Thunderbird or something like this. So this is the message itself rendered, right? So in both cases, I'm taking content and I'm making it look different, making it look more usable for the user. But as you can see, the contents of these documents are quite different. 
So if you ever get confused about the difference between the broader internet and the World Wide Web, just come back to email because email is something that, you guys are that people are very familiar with. And think about the fact that both these are services that run on the broader internet, um, but neither email nor the World Wide Web defines the broader internet.